Hi, my name is James Shepard with North American Bank Card, and um, I'd like to make a few videos that talk about closing the sale, um, signing the contract, uh, finishing the paperwork, whatever you want to call it, um, but actually getting to the end of the sales process and ending up uh, with a new client, starting that new relationship with the client. Uh, I'm going to start by giving you two um, examples, um, and uh, I want you to think about these examples for a second and analyze the way that you approach the close, the way that you approach the end of a sale. Um, now again, I'm talking specifically about credit card processing, but this is pretty much applicable to any sales situation. Um, I always look at uh, closing a sale in two different ways. First of all, closing a sale is a lot like paying a bill. Um, if you had a bill, I want you to imagine right now you get a bill in the mail, and uh, the bill is for $500, and it is due tomorrow. Now there's only two reasons why you wouldn't pay that bill. Reason number one is that you don't have the money. Uh, you have not deposited enough funds in your bank account with which to pay that bill. So if you tried to pay that $500 bill, you would go into overdraft and you would not succeed in paying that bill. Uh, the check would bounce. The other reason is that you have the money in the bank, but you simply don't want to use up your money. You say, man, you know, I've got that money in savings and I'm just afraid that if I take that money out of savings and use it to pay that $500 bill, I won't have that $500 anymore and that scares you and so you don't want to proceed with the process of paying the bill because you don't want to use the money that you have built up. Now closing a sale, the two things we deal with in that situation, uh, we deal with uh, having trust and not being uh, able to use it or not having enough trust. So trust is kind of the uh, monetary consideration uh, when you're closing a sale. Uh, that's kind of the money that it takes to pay a bill. To make a sale, it takes trust. So there's two types of salespeople out there. And don't kid yourself, you are one of these two types uh, in, to a certain degree. Um, I know which type I am, and I'll explain it in a minute. The first type of salesperson, um, they are extremely good at building up trust. And uh, they build up trust, and build up trust, and build up trust. And they're, everyone that meets them loves them. They're gregarious, they're outgoing, everybody thinks they're a great person but they never close any deals. And the reason why is because they have all this trust, but either they don't know how to use it or they're afraid to use it more than likely. They're afraid to use up that trust. Uh, they don't want to use it up because then they think it won't be there anymore. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. The second type of salesperson is the stereotypical salesperson. They have no idea how to build up trust. All they do is they just keep overdrafting their account and overdrafting their account and overdrafting their account over and over and over again, even when they know that the client is not going to say yes. I mean, there's no doubt. They know the client doesn't like them. They know the client doesn't trust them. They know the client is 99 times out of 100 is going to say no in this situation. What do they do? They still ask a yes or no question. And what do they get in return? No. Uh, that is the second type of salesperson. Now. The type of salesperson I am, I'm the first type. I always err on the side of having too much trust. I want people to like me. I want clients to like me. I'm trying to build a business in my community, so I want people in the community to respect me as a professional business person. So I always err on the side of not always using the trust to the maximum that I could. I'll have a little bit of a savings account of trust, if you want to say, say it that way. And so I have that trust there. Um, so you have to learn, first of all, how to build trust with clients. And I'm going to talk about that first, how, what things you can do to build up your savings account of trust so that you have something to draw on when you need to close the account, when you need to close the sale. You have some trust, uh, some respect that you can draw on from the client to close the deal. And so you need to, first of all, stop and think about that a second. Which one of those two are you? Sales that you've lost in the past, why did you lose them? Did you lose them because you never asked for the business? Because you know you're the type of person that says, "Well, I didn't get that sale, but you know they really like me, and they just you know they had a better deal with the guy they were with, and, and blah 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 blah." All these excuses that they told you why they weren't going to give you the business, and you bought it hook, line, and sinker, and you left without asking for the business. And but they still really like you. Um, that's how I am. If you're that type of person, that happens to me more often than about anything else. And so I have to constantly work on that and constantly overcome that uh, problem in my sales process of making sure that I use up the trust that I've built to try to close the deal. 
uh, or are you the second type of salesperson where the people you haven't closed, you know why. It's because they didn't like you. It's because they didn't trust you. You are always saying, man, I have a, I have a problem with them uh, working on this certain area. They, they seem like they don't trust me. They seem like they don't want to sign the paperwork. They seem like they just aren't sure about me. Okay. That's, that, it's not that any weak, that, that weakness is worse than the other one. They're both a weakness. You just have to know which one you have so you can work on it. Uh, if you're that type of person, you need to work on building up trust with the client. Usually that type of salesperson, the type of salesperson that's really gung-ho and just constantly closing, if that kind of salesperson will learn how to build up trust, they can be a dynamite uh, salesperson if they learn how to build trust because they're not afraid to close, and that's really important. Um, so you need to work on one of those two. All right, second way that I want you to look at the uh, closing process of a sale, you are like a doctor, okay? Now, I want you to picture this. You go into the doctor's office, and you're sitting in the waiting room. Now, uh, the nurse comes in. She uh, takes your temperature. You get on the little scale, and she weighs you, and she says, uh, Dr. So-and-so will be right in. So the doctor comes in. He takes one look at you, and he says, You know what? I think you have cancer. I think you need chemotherapy, and I think we should start this Friday. Now, what is your response going to be in that situation? You're like me. Your response would be, um, let me get a second opinion on that. Why? Because that doctor's a quack. He didn't take your blood work. He didn't talk to you. He didn't build up any trust with you. And you think, who are you to tell me I have cancer? Who are you to tell me I need to have surgery? You don't know anything about me. You don't know anything about what I need. You don't know anything about my condition. Um, a professional doctor has no problem closing his patients. Um, picture this. You go into a doctor's office. He comes in. He takes blood work. He says, nice to meet you today. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? Boy, now, where is the problem at exactly? What symptoms do you have exactly? When did the symptoms start? How long have they been going on? Your pain, is it a 1 or a 10, somewhere in there? Where is the pain level at today? Takes your blood work. He says, you know, I'm going to look at the blood work. I'm going to do some detailed analysis. And then I'm going to come back. Uh, how about you swing back by here next week on Thursday, and we'll take a look, and, and we'll see what I found out. You come back on Thursday. He says, you know, I saw some things in the blood work that do concern me a little bit, and I want to be upfront with you about it. One of the possibilities is cancer. There are some other possibilities, but it could be cancer. I'm not sure yet. I want to run some more tests, and I want to have you come back next week. You come back the next week, and the doctor says, you know what, I hate to tell you this, terrible news, but you do have cancer, and... Uh, we need to talk about some possible solutions, some things that you could do. One of those possibilities is chemotherapy. Um, I think that would be the right decision. That's what I would do if it was my wife or if it was my child. Um, but I think you should do chemotherapy. Why don't you sleep on that tonight? I'll c uh, come back in tomorrow and let me know what you'd like to do. Now picture this. Now you're back in that office. After all of that's happened, you're back in the office. And the doctor says, well, I could schedule you for chemotherapy on Thursday. Uh, what's your decision? Now what is your decision going to be? Yes, absolutely. You don't need a second opinion. You don't need anything else. That was a professional doctor. He was a professional. He knew what he was doing. He did his research, did his homework, came up with the right solution for you. So as a sales professional, you got to think of yourself as a doctor. You are a professional. You are supposed to know what's going on with that client. So when you just walk in right off the street and you have all the solutions, you have all the answers, uh, guess what? The client doesn't trust you, and they're going to get a second opinion, which we all know is they're going to get another estimate from your competitor. And they're going to take your estimate, and they're going to go to the competitor to get a better price. They're going to go to their current uh, processor with whom they already have trust because that processor has been processing their transactions, sending them to the bank for them. So they already trust that processor. They're going to use them. They're going to use your estimate to get a better price with the person they're currently with, and they're going to put you off because they don't trust you. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, coming up next. We're going to talk about, first of all, how to build up that trust that you need with the client in order to move forward with the sales process.